Yeah, of course. So uh, she gave a brief intro of everything, and um, I do a little bit of everything. Again, I've started as a personal trainer, uh, doing strength conditioning for years, you know, with a lot of the similar um, ideologies as Kat has, um, where, you know, try to look at the body as a whole, you know, like how you move affects how you feel, how you eat affects how you feel, how you breathe affects how you feel, you know, so um, really like as I'm, you know, now where I spend a lot of my time um, helping people feel better. Um, so many people have day to day aches and pains that affect their life in a negative way. Um, and it can be really frustrating, stressful to have your activities of daily living be uncomfortable. Like if all you think about is your neck hurting, if all you think about is your low back hurting while you're trying to work, you know, if you want to go work out but your knees hurt, you know, like mm -hmm. there's a lot of impediments to getting to where somebody wants to go, you know, whatever your goals might be, um, when you have these things impacting your life. Um, so I've, I've tried to do my best now to help educate myself about all of these things but then hopefully go out and teach other people, um, especially like Kat, so that she can reach more people. You know, like I can only affect so many people. And then if I affect the next person that also has, you know, 50 people that they have in contact with, you know, hopefully over and over then we can reach more people. I, I, my favorite yeah. um, your people to reach is other coaches, other trainers, because then it just amplifies you know, how, how this message can be spread and taught from one person to another. So like um, a domino um, effect. <laughs> like sometimes when I go really to see you, you tell me stuff and I'm like, I need to make sure I tell my clients this because this is good. Like I might have been yeah. saying and the thing too is I learn more and more every time I meet with you about, you know, something that has been ingrained in my mind of how we're supposed to be like, you know, squatting, like driving through your heels. Like that was so ingrained and like meeting you and hearing other concepts behind it. You introduced me to other authors and other strength and condition coaches that talk about no, no, no foot flat. So, um, yeah. a lot of that stuff, like I just continue to learn from you and I'm like, I got to tell them this stuff. <laughs> um, and you know, what I like to do every time I do talks or, you know, whether it's conversations, you know, like whatever, if you guys all have, questions and thoughts and you know I know you don't know a ton about me at this point but like you can just throw something out of nowhere like if you have questions or concerns of your own feel free to send them I don't think I will get them but you know but if you want to text them over the chat little button on the bottom to yeah. chat you can ask questions you know um you know just to give you guys some ideas um, of a lot of the stuff that I spend time with is, you know, using your own, having like your, your own tool belt grow. So, you know, if you get stressed easily, you know, and don't feel like you have the tools you need to learn how to de-stress, you know, that's kind of up my alley, like using breathing techniques to learn how to de-stress yourself or learning breathing techniques to help your back feel better, you know? So all of that stuff's kind of in my wheelhouse, you know, as long as, um, you know, it, it can be something that everybody could tr try or practice. I'm, help I'm happy to walk anybody through anything too, if you have specific questions. I like um, to be as interactive as possible. Um, so please, you know, let me know if something comes to mind um, or if there is anything in particular that you guys want help with, um, I'm happy to try to individualize that a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to walk you through all that. So, but um, yeah. with that in mind, um, tell me, Kat, a little bit more real quick um, about what you guys are all have been working through. Like, what's your guys' goals for the most part? Like, where's everybody at at the moment? Everybody is in all different phases. <laughs> so some are like advanced, I would say advanced lifters. Um, others are going on a strength training, 
regimen where we're trying to build. Others are on more of a weight loss journey. Um, some mm -hmm. are in deficits, some aren't, and mm -hmm. some are newbies into getting to the gym. So we're kind of all across the board, but we do have a lot of athletes in here, people who were previous either high school, like really um, high school athletes or even college athletes. So we have a wide mm -hmm. spectrum here. All right, perfect. We have we have moms too. We have moms. We have aunts. We have yeah. <laughs> across the board. Got it all. Um, just something to um, touch on as well for all of you. You know, like I want you to be able to like come away with like this thing that was helpful today, or um, that you can use to do that. You know, I always want you guys to have like some kind of takeaway, um, and. Sometimes it's just having the conversation around uh, women's health and, and stress. And um, I know I probably don't come across as a uh, women's health expert by any means off, off the get go. Um, but I've spent a lot of time working with postpartum women and, you know, women wanting to have kids and stuff like that, too. And, and really, it's all the same for everybody. Like everybody has the same parts. Well, for the most part. <laughs> um not always i've had a couple yeah. people like have stuff removed when they were born like all kinds of crazy stuff but um but like you know when you're trying to get stronger when you're trying to get in better shape like your core your diaphragm and your pelvic floor are some of the most important parts um so a can you explain a little bit just so they know um what your pelvic floor is because i feel like it could just be a broad term which so is core but can you mm -hmm. dive into a little bit more of that yeah, for sure. So again, it's more important for women, um, even than guys are just more prevalent, I guess, to have issues with those areas. Um, and when you think of like inhaling, so why don't we all just kind of do this together really quick? Yeah, not like her. Um, <laughs> don't do that. Um, but put your hand kind of like on your chest, okay? And I want you to put your other hand on your belly, okay? So when you breathe, okay, there's this misnomer that the air needs to go in a certain place, but in reality, it needs to go everywhere. So when you inhale, you should feel that like from a side view that your hands both move away from your spine. So as you inhale, I want you to feel chest and belly both rise together on an inhale. On an exhale, they should both fall off together. James, you're frozen again, just FYI. Mm -hmm. If you only feel one, am I frozen for everybody? Because I think your face froze and nobody else did. Okay, cool. Maybe it's me. All right, great. It is um, me. <laughs> um, when you inhale, if you only feel your chest, okay? then that's problematic because then you're not using your diaphragm okay you, what you're really feeling when your stomach expands a little bit okay is that is your intestines pushing out against your belly okay your diaphragm moves down like this when you inhale so your lungs are in here so if you didn't feel your chest move you didn't use your lungs pretty impressive feat right um like how do i breathe i'm not using my lungs but reality is Imagine if, if you guys are laying down, especially the, the lady with the uh, dog there, imagine if your dog's sitting on your chest, okay? It gets a little hard to breathe pretty quick, right? Like you feel like there's just like, okay, you gotta move, like I can't get a good breath in, okay? If your ribs don't move, your ribs are literally smashing your lungs all the time. So it's kind of, you, and you, it's happened so little for so long that you don't actually really notice the small changes that are happening over time, but then you feel like you can't get a good inhale in. Like, you're just kind of like, <sighs> like I, I just don't feel like I can get a deep breath sometimes, like the air doesn't move. And when these ribs get stiff, it makes your neck stiff, okay? Because all of this, all these muscles attach to these ribs right here, okay? So if the ribs don't move, the neck muscles don't move. Your neck gets stiff, you feel like this from working, okay? So a large part of just being able to get your air into your ribs and into your belly evenly can reduce neck tension. It can then reduce back tension. And then 
if you wash my hands, so like the top hand would be like your diaphragm, which is at the bottom of your ribs. So like if you take your fingertips and you kind of hook them in, okay, you should be able to kind of get underneath like where the soft spot of your belly is and almost be able to feel the bottom of your ribs, right? Okay, you can kind of underhook and dig in there a little bit, okay? So the bottom of your ribs, right underneath as you underhook that is where your diaphragm is. So if you can underhook, and then breathe in, your fingers should get pushed out. And you shouldn't I think be a lot of people too, when they're stressed, like how I first like breathe, I was like, like they just mm -hmm. breathe that way, which is um, an accessory breather. But when people yeah, are stressed, they breathe that neck way. To breathe. Like we don't yeah. want to use our neck. We want to use our ribs and our diaphragm. Okay. Yeah. So finishing with the pelvic floor then. So when these move, when your diaphragm drops and you feel your intestines getting pushed out, in where your belly is, that means your pelvic floor is lowering as well. So your diaphragm and pelvic floor lower together. Okay. So as you inhale, they go down. As you exhale, they come up. Okay. It's almost like a little hammock. Okay. So if you imagine your pelvic floor kind of looking like a hammock, okay, when you get in a hammock, it sinks down. Okay. And it holds everything, hopefully, from your ass falling on the floor. Um, and you're yeah right your pelvic floor is literally the same it actually is catching your guts from falling out like a hammock so it's mm -hmm. holding everything in so you've probably heard of like a woman having a prolapse you know especially as a lot of women get older happens it's happening younger and younger though um so prolapse is literally your stuff falling out and why why is so, that happening and becoming more prevalent younger and younger um, I think it's just the inactivity um, and the lack of, um, unfortunately, us taking care of women after they have kids. Um, and most other countries have like a pelvic floor therapy after you have a kid and we don't really here. Like you have a kid and you're like, all right, good luck. Back to your life. You know, fingers crossed that nothing falls out. Um but really, if you teach people, because so here, so yeah. when you have a kid or you're pregnant, okay, even actually if you're um, actually overweight, um, it kind of happens the same way. So the visceral fat or the baby can help shove, it pushes your diaphragm up a little bit, okay? If your diaphragm gets pushed up, okay, it stays high. So when you inhale, it doesn't move down. And when it moves down, your pelvic floor actually grabs and holds and gets stronger. So if your diaphragm never moves down, your pelvic floor never holds and gets stronger. If it stays up, it's just weak all the time. It's, it's not working because it doesn't have to. It's, it only works when you get a good diaphragmatic breath. If you're not breathing well in your diaphragm, your pelvic floor basically is on vacation because your diaphragm is too. They're, they literally have to pump together like a piston. That makes sense. Um, so if it gets shoved up because you're pregnant or even if you're a little bit overweight, then you're never putting, um, the stress on the pelvic floor muscles to get stronger again. And it doesn't just fall back down because you had a kid. Right. Like it's been like that for nine months. Like most things don't just magically get better after being a certain way for nine months. That's just like when we're training, like for our muscle tone anyways, like we have to add stress, we have to add resistance in order to see adaptation so pelvic floor muscle as well yes everything in our body will respond to appropriate amounts of stress yeah. so yeah. bones if you have like osteoporosis as a thing you're concerned about as you get older if you add small amounts of stress to the bones the bones get stronger if you add too much you break them you know like it's it, <laughs> Muscles are the same way. So like when you strengthen muscles a little bit at a time, they get stronger and stronger and stronger and more resilient and you get better. Um, ligaments, tendons, all that stuff's the same. Okay. So if you're never stressing your pelvic floor because you don't breathe well, your pelvic floor is going to get weaker. That's just how that works. And then you try to jump and run and you peek a little bit or you sneeze or so if... I was telling them about that being my case like two years ago. I think we were working together. It was mm -hmm. little tinkles. 
Yeah, so it, it's, it can be similar. So in her situation, uh, and a lot of athletes do this, as their pelvic um, position moves more anterior, which is the same idea, right? So if you're pregnant, like you have a pregnant belly and your yeah. low back step, it's pushed forward. If yeah. you're overweight, your belly's pushed forward. A lot of athletes, as they get really strong in certain areas, they push their pelvis too far forward the same way, and then their pelvic floor isn't engaging regularly. So they do stuff and they pee a little bit on accident. Um, it's not the end of the world, but what we want to make sure people understand is that it is not ideal or optimal. Right. Just because something is normal doesn't make it ideal. Right. That's like, if it's something that always happens to you and you're just like, Oh, that's just what I do. Like, I'm just, I just tinkle when I sneeze. Like, I feel like I can hear that from so many people. And like, even in my family, my mom's been like, Oh, every time I sneeze, I tinkle like, and has just made it like, that's yeah, me. And, and that is a recipe for potentially having a prolapse as you continue to yeah. get older, you get weaker. Yeah. The, there's not enough strength in there to help hold everything together at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you guys breathe, okay, you want, especially it's harder sitting down um, than like laying on your back. But like if you're laying on your back, you want to feel both of your hands rise and fall with the breath. That's like the, the easiest, most simple place to start is feel that that is happening. And with, um, you can take your own hand and massage your belly or, you know, massage your chest a little bit, okay? Because if those areas are stiff, they're not going to move. So just having a little bit of time to practice letting your belly relax, letting your chest relax, and then feeling that air move into that space, okay, can really make sure that your pelvic floor is doing a little bit better. You know, you're not pulling stress up into your neck. And there's so much cool research on just slow, relaxed breathing, improving anxiety, um, improving, you know, pain, you know, there, there's so many variables with that. So like if you have constant pain, if you have anxiety, you can actually fix roughly having anxiety by getting really good at breathing. Because mm -hmm. anxiety actually, there's the receptor that recognizes um, a lack of carbon dioxide, or too much carbon dioxide in the system, excuse me. And it literally causes panic and anxiety. Like they've tested it on like two masks on their face and people flip their shit and literally like one point causes anxiety in humans almost instantly. So if you're not good at breathing and you have too high carbon dioxide levels, like you literally just have anxiety attacks and, and you're more anxious all the time. Um, so you can actually reduce anxiety by getting better at breathing slower and, and with all of your, your chest and your diaphragm. So if people have struggled with anxiety, like that's the first place I start with them, especially if they've already tried meds and done other stuff and it hasn't gotten gone away completely. It's probably not a chemical issue in the brain at that point. It's probably that CO2 receptor causing you to have anxiety and panic attacks just by a lack of good breathing. Mm -hmm. That's literally like one of the most groundbreaking things they figured out in the last couple of years is that yeah, not yeah. all anxiety is in your brain. Like part of it's actually in like part of your breathing receptors that causes anxiety in your brain. Right. And then I feel like that leads to being anxious is when, you know, they're not even breathing through their belly. It's just all like that mm -hmm. neck breathing and chest mm -hmm. breathing, which makes yeah. it worse. It's the same. Like I said, like if you put an anvil on your chest and lay down, you'd be like, all right, get me the hell out of here. Like I need to tell <laughs> yeah. to breathe. Like it almost causes anxiety or like yeah. if you had somebody holding you underwater, like imagine yeah. somebody holding you underwater and you can hold your breath for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. You might be okay with it for about 20 seconds. But when there's 10 seconds left on the clock, you're like, all right, let me out of this. Like, let me loose. Like stop holding me under the water and you start to panic. Yeah. Um, but being on dry land ends up being the same way. Like if you can, like, I'm sure some of you probably do stuff and catch yourself holding your breath sometimes. Like I've never had a group of people 
that I've talked to be like, oh yeah, nobody does that. Like everybody fucking does that. So like, but, like you'll be doing a task and just catch yourself holding your breath, like cooking. You're like cooking away and all of a sudden you're like, I haven't breathed in five minutes. You know, like, it's like, what the fuck's wrong with me? Um, but it's literally your body trying to create stability and tension and because your diaphragm creates a lot of the stability for your core. If you can't use your core, you brace and hold your breath to help. Yeah. So just by getting better at breathing with your diaphragm, you'll catch yourself holding your breath less often during the day too. Um, if you're holding your breath, you're getting a CO2 pickup and you're going to cause anxiety. So it's just this never ending annoying ass loop that if you hold your breath, you're going to get anxious. If you are holding your breath, you're just not using your diaphragm and then your back starts to kick in and you just get back discomfort. Like I feel like everybody too that I talk to, like one of the most common times people get low back discomfort is like when they're cooking or when they're brushing their teeth. Like it's something stupid where they're just kind of like leaning over a little bit and or chopping vegetables or, you know, whatever you're doing. And mm -hmm. it's just like, ugh, like why does my back hurt just like standing here? I would uh, say laundry is a big one too. See, there you go. Yeah, it, it's just those little things that those activities of daily living where you're not breathing well. And then you just feel your low back muscles just feeling like this the whole time. So let's try thinking about breathing in a different direction real quick. Okay. So breathing in your chest is great. Breathing in your belly is great. Okay. But you have a whole other three quarters of your body still. So like if we make your body a box, like this is the front, this is one side, this is one side, and the whole back is the other side of the box. We'll call it, you know, some kind of rectangle of some sort. <laughs> um, so when you do that, you need to be able to breathe this way when you inhale as well. Okay, so take your hands, kind of make like a little like U shape kind of gig, okay, and put that right on the top of your hip bones, just above the hip bone though, into the soft spot, like you're squishing yourself like with a corset almost. I always imagine like somebody just like squeezing it tight and it just goes, oh. um, but just kind of push your hands in a little, and when you inhale again through your nose, you should feel your hands getting pushed away from each other. Yeah. If you felt this we need to get it more down i saw a couple of you i caught a couple of people already so when you breathe in try to breathe in silently and feel yourself moving east and west or laterally into your hands and just kind of breathe in and out a couple of times and really see if you can make that get pushed apart okay some people it's gonna be like i can't breathe there like what what the hell is that you're full of shit um, we talked about that a little bit maybe it was a couple two or three weeks ago about the whole lifting belt like the purpose of that is so uh -huh. that you breathe into that 360 so really into yeah. the sides but yeah I, i'm going chunk by chunk but really you want mm -hmm. to imagine your core being like a circle kind of like a cylinder and you should be able to breathe into every part of it so we did I think the top and the front and the sides and then yeah, I think the breaking it up into different segments too is beneficial to like understand, okay, yes, we have to break things up into small tasks so that we can accomplish 360. But I mm -hmm. think you having us pay attention to different areas first realizes, well, crap, you know, I, I actually didn't know my belly can move that way or, oh, I can breathe mm -hmm. into my sides. Never, never thought of that. Yeah, most people don't spend the time thinking about where they're breathing. <laughs> If you spend most of your day thinking about where you breathe, you're not probably thinking about shit else. Um, but I mean, having, an, I mean, it's just like anything else. It's like if you aren't great at something, you need to bring some conscious awareness to it first. Yeah. Okay. Once you get the conscious awareness that, you know, and I think about it in four stages, right? Yeah. So before we had this conversation, most of you probably didn't have much or any awareness of how you were breathing. So sorry for bringing that to your attention. But you were, you were, you know, unconsciously or like subconsciously unaware of what to do or what was proper. Okay? And so like, I always think of it like learning an instrument. Like I can pick up a guitar, but I don't know where the fuck my fingers go or I, I don't know anything about it. Right. So I know nothing until somebody starts to show me. So step one is not knowing anything, basically. Step two 
is being aware of it now. So like I might know where to put my fingers on the guitar and like where the strings are, but it doesn't mean I know how to do it right. Right. So you're kind of all like, I think this is what's happening. Like maybe so now you have awareness. So you're, you're consciously aware, but you're still incompetent, right? You're still like, I don't know how to do this. Like, and it takes practice. So that's the second step. The third is now you become conscious and you are competent enough when you think really hard. You're like, oh, I can feel air go there now, like on this side, but not this side. So yeah. you're, you're getting it. So you, you, you've built enough awareness that you can now do it when you think about it really hard. Yeah. That's a great third step. And that's where everybody has to get with learning any skill. How to eat better, how to live better you know it doesn't matter and then at some point that conscious awareness is not needed to perform it anymore like you're completely are they thinking about where their fingers go anymore no they're just jammed away and enjoying it right that's again the same for eating the same for lifting the same for breathing when you put in enough practice for a while it becomes unconscious and you're totally competent um so you, you have to just go through those processes of the uncomfortableness to learn how to get there in the first place if you don't spend that uncomfortable time learning you just never get any better at anything um so i mean i think that's you know something to take with all of this stuff you know eating lifting moving you know taking care of yourself like it's going to be uncomfortable and you're not going to feel good at it for a little while probably but it's worth the effort to feel these things feel you know what food does to you feel what lifting does for you and can do for you learning how breathing in better ways and positions and timing makes your mental state feel better and maybe your body you know so um all this all of this stuff ties together um, which is why I love being able to, you know, learn all these different things. So did any of you not feel the air going kind of east and west or did everybody get it a little bit at least? Everybody I think there's that? also a raise hand feature. If you can like click your name on there, you can like raise your hand. But um, I don't see anybody. You since you're probably the, uh, the top. There. Raise your hand and I'll see if I get anything. Um, no, yeah. You know how to do it. Nope, just kidding. <laughs> there anyway. used, there was one. She's fired. Right. Um, just kidding. Um, you're in great hands. Unmute uh, yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're good. Reveal yeah, yourself okay. if you did it. Feel it. <laughs> so, um, so that was the front and the sides. Okay. Um, and technically, this could be fun. You may, none of you may not like it. You don't have to show me, obviously. But you can actually do your pelvic floor at the same time too, okay? So like you find, <laughs> take a finger or two, find your butt bone, okay? So like the bones, like if you were gonna torture like a boyfriend and you were gonna like dig your butt into like their leg to torture yeah. them with your butt bone, that is what you wanna feel, that bone. And then you go a little bit more towards the center, okay, where it's soft. And if you breathe in, you should feel your pelvic floor move down into your fingers. Does this work better laying down? I can do it sitting up. Well, hold on, I gotta find my butt bone. <laughs> there somewhere. But <laughs> you should be able to inhale and feel your pelvic floor moving down a little bit. Okay. So, and then on an exhale, it should feel like the tension just lightly moves away. So once you find the bone, you just move slightly to the center, okay? and it should just gently come up. If you can't quite feel it, okay, you can either tip forward a little bit more with your upper body and you can sometimes feel it, or if you sit back, you can feel it a little bit more. So depending on which side you're holding tension, oh. you can feel it. it a little bit more. I feel it better if I sit back as an inhale, I can feel my pelvic floor move down a little bit more. So there's an anterior and posterior pelvic floor. Um, I don't think I need to describe the differences between posterior and anterior, but you get there's anterior parts and posterior parts. And you, depending on if you lean back more or lean forward more, you get more air in either the anterior pelvic floor or the posterior pelvic floor. 
<laughs> so if you've ever had pelvic floor issues, you know, spending time breathing in your diaphragm and then feeling your pelvic floor expand towards the back. Like if you're going to fart or you're going to hold it in, like that's a posterior pelvic floor. And then the anterior pelvic floor is more like Kegels and you know, kind of old school stuff like that, that you can feel the front of your pelvic floor coming up or coming down. So that's the, the our box, right? So our rectangle, the sides we did, we did the front. There's a top of the box and a bottom of the box, right? So that was the bottom of the box, okay? The top of the box is just making sure you never breathe above into this stuff, okay? You wanna breathe below your collarbones, okay? So if you catch yourself breathing up with your neck, that's not great, okay? <laughs> But you wanna try to breathe, breathe below the collarbones, okay? You don't really have to do anything for that, um, but it helps to take your tongue and press your tongue in the roof of your mouth, okay? Like you were gonna say the letter N, and like wherever your tongue goes is where you press it. Yeah. That's the top of your pelvic floor essentially. So if somebody has an acid reflux, that's a pelvic floor and core problem a lot of times because they can't close this top cylinder. I've seen yeah. a couple of people look at me like, what? Shelby. Uh, <laughs> but this is the top, okay? So if you can't close this sphincter basically, right. you'll get acid reflux a lot of times, okay? Um, so that's a core issue sometimes, and it can be uh, a food and, you know, hydrochloric acid problem with digestive enzymes and stuff. But besides that, okay, so now you've got bottom, top, front, sides, okay? And then the back is the other part, okay? So we can go back to that um, kind of U-shape. All you do is take those fingers, especially your thumbs, and wrap them farther behind so you're pushing into like your QL muscles, the ones that get pissy sometimes and okay, when you're tight. So you just, it's the exact same height. So you sit, yeah. So just above the hip bones, okay. And then you kind of push them in like this, like where you're kind of sticking your thumb in the soft spot, okay. And then you try to breathe back into those thumbs. So as you inhale, you should feel your thumbs moving backwards from there. All right, this has been my problem. We know this, James, but it's I'll, got I'll better. Okay. So <laughs> it's got you, better. When you do like that back piece, okay? So your thumb is gonna go right oh, higher. above your hip bone, okay, into the back, okay? And then you want to, you want to feel that that thumb is moving back towards the wall behind you. Yeah. I don't know if you can see anything, but it should feel like it's No, you can see it. It should be filled with air as you inhale. Yeah. yeah. So that's the back side. Yeah. We did the top, the bottom. And there's even more like if you give yourself a bear hug, yeah, you should be able to feel air move between your shoulder blades. So like you give yourself a big hug and then you just breathe in. And you want to feel the air moving right between your shoulder blades when you do that. So those are your posterior ribs behind your lung and your heart. So if your lungs are filling, that should be moving backwards. Okay. That is literally all the different spaces you can breathe in. Or if you're not very good at breathing in one particular area, then those times present issues like that back spot. Like between your shoulder blades, if you're working and your neck gets tight right between your shoulder blades or you feel like you do this and kind of wiggle around, okay? That's from not being able to breathe in that space. Mm -hmm. The low back, if you can't put air in that low back space with your thumbs, you'll get some stiffness through your low back. Acid reflex can be here. Pelvic floor problems can be on the bottom, okay? Side to side can be like one-sided low back pain. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you get pain on one side of your low back because you're more this way, that means you can breathe over here, but not over here. Yeah. So all of that stuff relates to how well you function, how your day-to-day -day living goes. But if you have pain or discomfort in any of those areas, if you just stop and try to put air into those spaces, I would bet nine times out of 10, it's going to give you at least some relief and, and improvement in how that stuff feels. Mm -hmm.
Uh, questions on breathing all around your shit. Right. She asked, what breathing would you recommend for stress? But I, I think you kind of hit that. Uh, yeah, but so more specifically, um, there's two types that have been shown to be really helpful. Um, one's called box breathing. Um, and box breathing is when you literally, like you can outline my head with this little box that I'm in right now. Um, and down this side, you breathe in for four seconds. And then down across the bottom, you would hold your breath for four seconds. Up the side, you breathe out for four seconds, and then you'd hold for four. So you're literally drawing a box in your head. It's in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four, right? So And that's breathing in that box? Yep, yeah, you're just breathing an equal side, not a rectangle like this thing is, but an equal sided box. You can do fives. It, it's kind of hit or miss. Some people like doing four second boxes. Some people like doing a five second box. So that's just on your personal preference. Um, so that's really helpful for stress and anxiety and tension. Um, the other version is doing um, where you double the exhale. So let's say you breathe in for four through your nose. And then you would try to just breathe out nice and easy for eight. And just in for four, out for eight. So when you lengthen that exhale a little bit, it can actually start to reduce some of that stress as well. So um, box breathing, and, and actually too, I know Kat mentioned it on like my Instagram, but um, I do a, um, it's called Monday Morning Breath Work. So I do like a, a vlog, um, but it's also on my YouTube channel where you can just go through and I have, I'm on week seven right now. So it's a video explaining box breathing and how it works. Um, there's videos of like breathing into your back. There's videos of how to unclog your nose if your nose is stuffed up. There's videos on all kinds of random shit. Um, so every Monday morning I do that. So if that stuff's an issue for you, you're welcome to sign up or just go to the YouTube channel and watch whatever is helpful for you. Um, it's not on my Instagram because I'm terrible at managing my social media shit. But, um, but yeah, the so like stress breathing is, box breathing is one of the best. Uh, it's a great place to start. And then after that, it'd be learning to lengthen your exhales for double um, your inhale. James, I asked a question that I, I know we worked on a couple years ago, or at least you introduced that concept to me, but of trying to run and breathe in and out through my nose. Um, and this wasn't a sprint, like this would just be a normal run I would try to go on. So can you um, answer a little bit about what is the best breathing strategy during a run, considering it's not intense? Because intense, we're going to be having to do open mouth, like sprinting, you can't avoid it you need oxygen spot as fast as possible so can you hit a little bit on that one yeah even if you're not running so that we can take it back a notch like okay. anytime you are walking on this earth mm -hmm. you want to breathe in through your nose and out through your nose if you catch yourself like you know jaw hanging open breathing you know through your mouth okay um one it's going to clog your nose up Two, it's gonna raise like blood pressure, heart rate, all kinds of all that other stuff. Um, because when you're breathing through your mouth, your brain thinks that you are in a high stress mode. So like sprinting is high stress. Like yeah. you have to breathe through your mouth, okay? Um, if your mouth is open, that's that shifts your body to burn carbohydrates as well. Um, which again, that's high stress, high, you know, need energy now. Um, so there's actually really cool research too on breathing in and out through your nose consistently burns more fat daily than um, breathing through your mouth does. So if you're breathing through your mouth, you're burning carbs, sugars. If you're breathing through your nose, you're burning more fat as you just live. Um, Interesting. So there's some really cool research on that stuff. And, you know, if you use how you breathe as a... Uh, as a monitor or, you know, self-check mechanism, you know, like if you can't run without breathing through your mouth, you should probably slow down a smidge, you know, like that's how I gauge, like if you want to do aerobic work, like 
you know, like stair step or walk or run or that should be aerobic, yeah. right? So yeah. aerobic is breathing through your nose. Anaerobic is breathing through your mouth. That's high intensity. Yeah. So if you're on a, a gentle run and you're breathing through your mouth the whole time, you're not even actually doing aerobic work, really. You're doing anaerobic work, high stress work, and that's not going to give you a relaxing response either. Like people should be able to do aerobic work to feel better. Like you should get like those runners high or you should feel good after running or taking a long walk. Like, I don't know anybody unless you're in a lot of pain everywhere. Like it doesn't take a walk. that doesn't feel a little bit better afterwards. Yeah. You know, like that's that old Chinese proverb, right? Like, you know, if you're having a bad day, go take a walk. And if you're still having a bad day, take a longer walk. It's true. <laughs> um, um, so if you get out and walk, just focus that you're breathing in and out through your nose, because if not, you might not actually get a lot of that um, feel good response from doing those things, because your brain thinks you're in stress mode. Because you're breathing yeah. through Yeah. You don't want to be in stress mode taking a walk. Right. And we talk about that, you know, after a workout, I was like, you need to get out of that intense state that you were in of like, the mm -hmm. best way to do that is go on a walk afterwards to bring you down into parasympathetic mode and um, nasal breathing would definitely be it. Now, are you saying that just breathing in and out through your nose or just in through your nose and out through your mouth? For what? Say for running. Should it be like, I'm running, inhale through my nose, out through my mouth? Yeah. So we can, we'll just give it three gears, right? So like yeah. a, a bike it has gears or your car that has gears okay first gear okay is always going to be breathing in through your nose out through your nose okay mm -hmm. second gear is going to be in through your nose out through your mouth third gear is going to be breathing in however the fuck you can get air in like because you're like out of breath like i need air now give it to me um the world's running out of air um so that should be the highest stress, like hard, hard and high intensity, like sprints, you know, that kind of okay. stuff. Should be all mouth potentially. Yeah. Middle gear is going to be in the nose, out through the mouth, and where you can still kind of manage that airflow comfortably, um, but it's going to be a little bit harder work. And then everything else uh, that you want to feel good after, that's meant to be like recovery mode and and. It should always be in through your nose, out through your nose. Yeah. Uh, or else you're not getting that same response. I tried. Like, um, I think the furthest I got running on treadmill, like just in through my nose and out through my nose, was only a mile. But that was like really, really hard to do. Um, just focus on breathing in and out through the nose. So I yeah, really couldn't. Uh, I think right now I get about two minutes. Yeah. And again, you're fast as shit. So you're probably going too fast. But um, uh, so like, that's literally, you just have to slow down slow enough that you don't, don't need to use your mouth. Like yeah. running, running can be hard to manage that line. Um, but if any of you have ever used like a rowing machine or a stair stepper, it's a lot easier to slow the pace and just go with like the machine a little bit. Um, or a bike is even easier, you know, like to manage where yeah. you're at, you just slow way down, you know, feels hard to run at a certain slow pace. Like you're just like, I'm running. I think it hurts worse sometimes. Like, I yeah. see those grandpas that are like, I'm like, yeah. how can you run that slow? That hurts my joints to look at you. <laughs> so again, it, you know, you can use that stuff um, as like a guide to what you're trying to accomplish. You know, um, yeah. if you're trying to feel better and have a recovery workout or just move your body, like you should not be breathing through your mouth to do that. So. So challenge for everyone when you're doing your walking or your neat, um, mm -hmm. focus on just breathing in and out through your nose. Uh, if you're hiking, yeah, that's going to be a little bit more challenging because you have those varying inclines, but mm -hmm. why not yeah, challenge yourself? It's a fun little game to try. I, I mm -hmm. do it all the damn time. Yeah. Like, all right. Like, don't let my mouth open, like climbing the hill, <laughs> you know, like on a hike and I get like halfway yeah. up. I lose. Um, but at least yeah. you can put some awareness around that again to mm -hmm. where you're like, oh, like, the rest of the time, make sure I just don't leave my mouth open to breathe. Um, I try to do that running up this, not, I don't run up the stairs to the apartment, but I'll try to do it going up my mm -hmm. stairs. And then mm -hmm. I feel like as soon as I get inside, I'm like, <laughs> just let that. it all out. <laughs> so there's actually like this really weird study they did. So like uh, when you breathe through your nose, if you wait so long because you're going so fast, 
that you take big gas of air or if any of you have ever like yawned while you're working out before like yeah. when you feel like you're in a good workout and all of a sudden you start yawning and you're like what the fuck's going on why am i yawning that's mm -hmm. literally just your body trying to regulate your oxygen better yes so you, i remember you, oh go ahead no it's just you you went too far with trying to do that that your body just starts demanding like more air basically and you don't want to go to the point where you either start yawning a bunch or you don't want to feel like you're gasping for air after you do it um because it literally just like uploads a bunch more um co2 into the system and then you know you almost defeat your purpose of doing it in the first place so um try yeah. not to go to that point that would happen to me honestly i learned that in college but after like during uh workouts and stuff in college i'd be yawning and it would just frustrate me i'm like i'm not tired why am i and then it's almost like it convinces yourself that you're tired because you're yawning mm -hmm. she's like uh well i'm not gonna go balls to ball on this next one because apparently i'm tired but when i learned that it's actually your body is trying to get you to take in more oxygen which mm -hmm. makes sense because i was sprinting all the time so mm -hmm. just trying to get as much oxygen as i can yeah and you were in high stress mode all the time so yeah. i mean yeah it's just it's just trying to learn about your body and and again it can be similar again like i correlate everything like with food and exercise is the same damn thing so like mm -hmm. You you need to use these indicators of what your body is telling you, right? If you can't breathe through your nose in and out through your nose anymore, you know, like you just need to slow down a little bit. You know, like if your digestive system is a little pissed at you, like maybe it was too much of this food, or maybe it was a little too little of this. Like your body's always telling you something. You know, and if you can use those cues and start to learn like what they actually mean to you, then you're able to use that to your advantage and learn more about how your body functions. Yeah. Um, so just make sure like when you eat, like if you have a stomach ache after, like, you know, be aware of what you ate and you know, take some notes or something. And like, you know, if you're not feeling recovered and rejuvenated, you know, maybe your run or your walk is too much and you have to just back down a little bit so that you can actually get the recovery your body needs to do that stuff. But it's just starting to use these cues, I guess, or like these little things your body is trying to tell you and poke you about and just start to understand that your body's trying to help you and teach you these things, but you just have to listen to it a little bit more to get there. Yep. And I think most people, you know, not knowing this, they just continue to ignore it and brush it off. Like, um, mm -hmm. always burping yeah. after meals and stuff. I think people just start to identify, yep, that's just what I do. And they don't try to further understand of like, no, like why, why is this happening? Or know that that's not normal. Yeah. It's, you just have to keep asking why and somebody out there knows and you know, like you know, don't stop doing those things or you know blow those things off just because you don't know or you mm -hmm. know if, if i don't know i'm gonna find somebody else that does know you know yeah. like so there's always an answer to make sure that you know whatever you guys have going on like you don't just let it sweep it under the rug and move on like you just have to really spend the time investigating that stuff yeah which i feel like you do a really good job at pulling in the whole complete body as a functioning system like um i came to you with irritation at my ankle and we kind of pulled it up the chain of like no it's, it's your ankle's compensating for what's going on at your hip um and then when we cleared out our hip area we found like now my ankle's not like an issue right now so it's just really crazy when you really do understand and you learn from people who know how the body is connected it's it's one functioning unit you just pull it back up the chain and like all right let's address here first, clean this area up, and then we move um, further down, which is, it's just really mind blowing to see it actually like happen. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's cool to see. And, and I'm sure all of you guys will start to be more and more aware of like what your body's telling you as you work on it. And again, food, sleep, stress, exercise, breathing. I mean, they're all, they're all huge linchpins. And as long as you can, you know, like I said earlier, spend the time to evaluate how you're doing and how you feel like, you'll get there. You just, you know, you just can't stop before you've accomplished it. If anyone has any questions for him, um, this last little bit, just go ahead and unmute yourself and interject and ask it, ask it. Yeah, hit me or I'm gonna, my ass is gonna hit the couch for the night. 
Anybody got anything? All right. If, if you do have questions later, just feel free to hit her up and she can throw them at me like via email or something like that and I can email you guys back. Yeah, just um, go in the WhatsApp group and if you guys think of questions throughout the week too, um, drop them in there or you have his Instagram now. I'm sure he you shoot him a DM. I know he gets on there sometimes. So I usually respond. I don't necessarily <laughs> yeah. post, but I usually respond to people. So. And uh -huh. if you're in Columbus though, and you have a lingering issue, um, would be worthwhile to at least just sit down for a consult and see yeah, what I your do. causes. Doesn't I work. do free calls. Like if somebody wants to talk to me either for a half hour on the phone or, you know. Hey, you're you virtual to too, right? Yeah, just stuff online too. Um, yeah. And if you have, you know, if you want to come in in person and talk for a half hour about your issues, I'm always happy to do that with people. You know, that's free of charge. And then, uh, you know, see if it's a good thing to work together or not. And, you know, again, if not, I can always point you in the right direction usually too if you need something else. Absolutely. Well, thank you All so right. much, James. Of course. Thank you, guys. And again, thank feel free to reach out in the way and uh, let me know if you need help. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night, everybody. If you do have questions, like I said, go on in WhatsApp and just ask them. But hope you guys uh, got something out of it. He literally, and if you sit down and meet with him, you just find out so much more information about your body. And like, I would have never thought that the tinkling in my pants was related to any bit of breathing. Um, never would I have thought that the issue on my ankle was really coming from my posture at my hips and the whole breathing into the back thing. I've really been working on and I feel a difference when I'm lifting. Um, I'll actually take a break to hold on to like the rack or the pull or whatever and get down into that deep spot and like really focus on breathing into my back because like I said, it's just loosening up the area and getting more air into that um, area. So I'm not so tense and so tight back there, which leads to more of my anterior posture. So you can learn a lot from him. He works with a lot of Olympic and power lifters. Um, he does I think he does virtual like meeting with them in their form. So he helps a lot out with form and technique um, and just keeping you guys or anybody um, moving. So he's a big believer in like, Hey, if there's pain, let's see how we can get your body to work through it. Um, it's not going to say it's going to be gone for forever because something might come up, but um, he does believe in the holistic body and kind of moving through pain. Cause we're all athletes. We want, we want to be able to move and, um, yeah, he's just super smart and intelligent. So if you ever think of anything, just go ahead and reach out to him and or me or whatever. I can link you guys up. But I'm sorry for that thing. That's been in the background that whole time. <laughs> I want to see him. He sounds so cute. He's not cute. I had to have Houston feed him because he's over here around me. Like I have these stacks of quarters that I was like kind of playing with. And he like knocked it over while he was talking. And I'm just like, <laughs> he's a b-hole. He isn't cute. Kim, I saw your dog in there. <laughs> I took a picture of it, not gonna lie. <laughs> I thought it was cute. He's a little uh, needy. <laughs> he needs attention all of the time. He's not like right next to you like yeah. this. <laughs> yeah, for a little while. And he was in my face and he brought me like seven toys to throw. It's just, <laughs> You know that he has my attention. <laughs> yeah. Says, pay attention to me. Play with me. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have a good night. I'll be chatting with you soon. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye.